All right, it's time to go over this guy here. The pylon sign, the final final battle here for this whole Rancho Mirage conversion stuff. So we've already done the show, we did the tower, got the monuments going. So this is it, this is the logo um, part for the pylon sign. I already sent over the letters. Um, those are already probably routed or whatever, but this is just concentrating on the logo and kind of restructuring this top part. So I already did that other video. You can refer to that if you need more detail and stuff, but this is pretty much just going forward. But just for a quick overview, the idea is that from this line here up is being basically tore back to the studs. And there's gonna be framing here to, re to kind of make this shape because this shape kind of doesn't exist right now with this logo and all that. But tearing all this from this line up, tearing that back, creates a six inch ledge right here and that gets rid of all this existing stuff and then our logo is going to be sitting on top of this ledge which is nice this ledge is giving us a nice structural thing to just kind of bonk then we're going to bolt our logo to this section here basically this upper part we're going to expose all the steel framing and our logo there so Essentially 30,000 foot view. Um, I broke it in because this file started getting so big, it started crashing Corel. So um, we're gonna concentrate on two parts. Even though this is all one thing with this lo with the pylon, the logo is separate from these two frame pieces. So we'll do the side frame separately and we're gonna do the logo separately. And even though they install, like I say, they don't actually touch each other or anything. So they're kind of two separate, two separate beasts. Speaking of beasts, um, this thing is going to be essentially your Dark Beast Ganon. This is the final boss fight. You've been making these Kerf logos already, and this is just going to be like a, like a game. This is going to be the big boss. There's two of them. It's even bigger and badder. But everything you've already been doing, you're just going to use that and go forward with it. So, But it is sort of like putting up its final fight here for this one. So we'll go over it. It's a big one. Um, we've got uh, two sides, west for those geographically challenged that faces Los Angeles. And you've got your east, all quarter inch, dog bone city. Uh, keep an eye out for all these. You got these little circles here. We'll go over that. That's just for lift points. Um, this is just a double banger. You got two Mark sixes. These will be for the pylons uh, logos. So if we use, we'll go over that, the LED layouts, but um, these are just quads. So there's two boxes there, one each side. Uh, east west you've got your jigs for holding it together very similar to what you've already used except these are kind of different but you've already done that you've got a drill pattern um, keep an eye out for this guy this is for some connecting bars up top go over that um, your 063 white white already touched bases with you on that you'll use that to grind a little bit and lord's ease on and one last little guy is an 063 mounting template this will be for install to use in order to put the holes in the framing to line up. So that's it. So there's not, I mean, there's a lot of parts, but you're used to this already. So you kind of kind of know what's up. So you got a east and you got a west. Um, they're routed and laid out face down. So you can see it's backwards because the dog bones kind of face up. Um, and this is where the challenge is. Um, I know that you guys like to route the, or you guys weld these because you only need like one step. You you put it together using these jigs on the floor face up and then you weld these parts and then you put the wood around, which is cool. I like that you put the wood around and it keeps this the curve frame in a circle and then you burn it to that and you're done. The problem is, is you need to build out this seven inch framing, which is, you know, all of these connection pieces all of this needs to be built out on the back. And then at some point you also need to attach the main attachment framing to all of that. So again, that's a big boss battle. So unfortunately it means kind of handling this thing, like welding it, flipping it, welding it, flipping it, welding it, flipping it, trying to avoid some of the flips going forward. You guys can kind of make that decision. I went ahead and put these grooves on the backside 
And that's going to give you a nice eighth inch root pass to be able to burn these connections really well. But you're also going to have the benefit of this framing going right through there. So when you go to weld this, you know, you're going to want to connect these. Um, when you go to put these spars on, you want to make sure you don't weld all the way across. You're going to want to connect these to this and then burn it right there and make sure all of this is welded super well. As a general overview of the welding, you're not obviously you don't want to weld every linear inch of everything, but these need to be strong. So make sure that you're welding these up, you know, a couple inches in the corners here. It's going to take a while. Again, big boss battle. It's just, just going to be a lot. Um, you're going to have to weld these up, but you want to weld these up like you do your Mjolnirs for your uh, monument signs. You, you guys do a great job on that. Those are some nice looking welds. So you're going to want to do that to this guy. You're going to want to make sure that these, you know, are connected with a couple inches here. Make sure these are all welded down nice and then work your way down and just make nice symmetrical, nice welds all over. But again, you don't need to weld the entire, every single inch, but these seams here need to be welded. Now here's the challenge. The front 063 does not have clearance holes like I've done before because the ones we've done before, you weld face up. And I realize that you just have that weld on the face and then I clearance it. But we can't do that because first of all, the welds are on the back. And second, we can't have any holes in the face of here because the sign sticks up so high, right? So this is your curve. So all of this is exposed. So we are relying on this 063 to block all light. So I did not want to create any light leak holes anywhere. So there is that challenge. So here's what I'm saying is if you start, so if you weld this kind of the way it's laid out, you burn these first on the back, nice and strong. But again, don't go all the way across because you're going to have your, your bracing coming across here. So you're going to weld this really well, weld this really well, then flip it over. But I understand it's tough, but you flip it over, then use your wood to do your circle for your kerf stuff, burn that to that then flip this thing back over onto its curve face frame. Then you can start building out all this framing and add the seven inches out the back. Like I said, if you start out kind of burning all this and putting the framing, when you go to flip it over, you can't use your wood to keep that circle. So kind of see what you guys want to do as far as how many times you flip it. But again, that's where this comes in as like big boss because it's a pain in the butt. So maybe you can get away with having this face up Use the jigs on the other side, burn the face that's not grooved, but burn that side just enough really well, but keep it where it's just enough to keep this together. Then use your wood, burn your kerf face on, then flip it over just one time. And then you can start building all this framing, weld all this really well, and then get ready to flip it one last time when you go to burn this on. Now, what I say there is you're going to, because this is going to block access to your welds on the back. So let's look at this. If I bring this forward, see this blocks, even though it's seven inches you know, deep, you can get your gun in there, but this is going to block a lot of your welding here. And all of this needs to be super, like I say, it needs to be welded well, because this is going to be doing a lot of work holding this up here in 70 mile an hour winds like we get. So like I said, thankfully, it's going to be sitting on framing here. So that helps out. But this is all we get to make sure all of this is on there nice. Um, so you're going to want to, like I say, just kind of figure out which way to go, you know, which step is next. But you're going to want to put all this on here, weld all this really well while you can get to it. Then while this is face down with all this sticking up, I made sure that these dog bones are all the way through. So then you can lay this thing down on top with all the dog bones exposed. Then what you can do is tack it through the dog bones and then maybe pick some strategic dog bones that you go ahead and fill well, just really well. Just burn them really good, burn these, and then like maybe burn this one and burn a few of these. Then that will make it strong enough to then flip over one more time. Then I know it'll be uneven because it'll be sitting on this thing and it'll be kind of sitting on the back frame. But then you can kind of come through these holes and burn this one you know, burn the back frame to all of this framing here, you know, uh, let's see. Yeah. So you'll have to burn this to this purple frame. So in order to do that, though, you have to flip it one more time. So like I said, 
you're going to have to kind of figure out if you if you want to temporarily, you know, weld it really, you know, because tax won't work because this thing might fall apart. But you want to make sure. So you decide how many times you flip this thing. But there's really no way around it in order to build out um, all this back framing. Uh, so anyway, that's the challenge. Um, if you do face weld this, then what you're going to have to do at the end of this is flip it back over one more time and flatten those welds out as much as possible. Uh, make sure it's nice and you know clean and then go ahead and start lordsing these bad boys on. Um, if there's a little bit of weld, that's fine. But you, you know what I'm trying to say is you want to make sure the face is clean for the 063, whether you decide to temporarily weld it or not. So I think that's about it. I mean, like I say, it's not that much different than what you've done. It's just more steps and just more involved. So once you get these bad billies, um, just weld it up nice. Uh, make sure that if you do weld these, you grind these flush so it sits against the frame nice. Uh, but make sure this thing's burned really well. Then that's it. You're, you've, just like the other ones, you've made your logos. Then you're going to through tap these quarter inch plates and you're going to kind of permanently put in, I'd put a washer on this as well, but you're going to permanently put in the uh, half inch bolts. And then the half inch bolts are going to stick out two inches. And then that's kind of like a permanent stud ready to go. Um, where's my side profile there? Yeah. So then that for install, that will be these two inches sticking out and you, and then they shouldn't have to worry about getting a wrench, you know, bring your wrench with you, but that should theoretically be ready to hold it there. And then they can just thread on their nuts and their washer assemblies. And hopefully it should be hitting the framing just right. Um, so let's see where I got that. Right here, yeah. So kind of like this right here, this will be the, uh, the the three inch framing and you'll have your vertical supposedly laid out. Um, that's per the measurements I was given. So you can see where the holes here will go through the framing. So that's kind of for install. Um, that brings us to the install jig. Um, I kind of made some round numbers here, kind of got it to where it's, it's 118, it's close enough, it's gonna be fine. So if you, so once we tear back, so real quick for install, I see it as, so you have this steel framing sticking out. So I see you um, investing in some non-ferrous blades, whether it be Sawzall or get your batteries charged up with your circular saw or find electrical in here and plug in. Um, but you're just gonna go ahead and just chop the skin right along and just ride that steel frame. And you're just gonna cut the faces all the way along here, the existing, and then blow it out. And then, like I say, this mohawk here sits on top of the red steel. So you're leaving the mohawk, fine. But you're just gonna cut along there and sever the face and then just blow everything out uh, you know, above. Once that framing's all exposed, then you'll, you'll go ahead and do this. You'll take that mounting um, pattern. And if you go 118 from this edge, actually I made a square version there. So if you go 118 from this edge, and you measure to the point as close as you can, and then kind of go back and forth and make sure we're good, then um, you're gonna go ahead and drill through and clearance it for um, half inch hardware. So whether you make these three quarter inch or whatever. And then theoretically, it'll be as easy as lifting this bad boy in place, sliding these studs right in those holes, and you should be able to bolt it right to the frame. So as, big and as quote unquote pun intended monstrous as this is, as it's the final boss battle. Um, it's not that much more than you've done. It's just more work, more welding, uh, order in some welding wire, make sure you got gas, <laughs> welding gas. That is, I mean, you know, you probably have gas. Um, but yeah, just make sure you just line everything up and weld it, but it's essentially just no much more, just not much more work or parts and stuff than what you've already done. Just more, more parts and more work. Um, just make sure I got everything labeled. You got your four, you got your three, you got your two, you got your one. Just make sure that you get the right spar. You know, I got one, two, three, four. Uh, make sure it all lines up. These guys here, very simple. Take these circles, um, clamp them around, and you're just going to burn these. So I would like to, I was just trying to increase the thickness here because you're just going to, they're just going to put a shackle here. And this is how you lift these bad beasts. So they'll be lifting it by three and two up into the air. So just wanted to increase this thickness just to be extra safe. So just go ahead and burn that all the way around on both sides. Uh, that's on two and three. So that gives you a nice lift point. And the other part is what we're gonna do is through bolts. 
so these parts here so you can see like this here is the uh this will be the framing part here and so this part sticks up in the air so to give this extra strength probably overkill but spars one and four have let's see where are we? there we go so we're going to be using the two by two or two by four by quarter inch that we use for living desert so just grab two chunks out of what you've got for living desert and um you know order some in for this job plus you just got sent some living desert so anyway so grab two of these 66 and a half use the drill template and you're going to drill them out for half inch hardware so take them out to you know whatever uh five eighths holes and then spars one and four have holes corresponding i slotted them out real good so then you're just going to go ahead and put those on the inside install so once you get these bolted up to and they're all both bolted up both sides then you can get in your crane or bucket or whatever we're using and get up there and just put these to the back side of each of these and theoretically you should be able to just through bolt them down and hardware is i brought in hardware just to make sure we have it and that'll complete that so you'll have your two crossover spars in order to make this nice and strong right there it'll just cross right over um and then that should basically complete the the logo part of this um i did add uh yeah i have three through holes here for um, your circuits so essentially you'll have four circuits um we'll go over all that here in a second um, let's see, where is my layout? So there it is. Now I laid this out for GE Tetra Max. I understand getting parts and pieces in is tough. Um, you read the news, there's over 60 container ships outside of Long Beach right now. So it's unheard of. So hopefully we can get material, we can get product. Um, if we do Power Max, it blows all this out of the water. So even, so if we can just do Tetra Max, then we can break this up to two circles, two circles, three circles, and then the rest. So that gives you four circuits. Um, but let me know because I did the, like I say, the power box is a quad. Um, so we need to change this. If you have to do power, uh, if you have to do power max instead of Tetra max, then we need to rethink this. So, and we get, a, <laughs> it's a lot more power supplies. So let me know. Um, while we're here, the letters, I already sent the letters. So, um, but I didn't send the, I didn't do a led layout. The letters, um, are fine with, um, just a double banger. So you can see if we break it up like this with, with Tetra Max though, again, this blows out of the water if it's, if it's power max. So if we do Caliente and Asino Spa, that's one power supply that could be here. And then this side of it, 57 feet is good. If we do Agua C and Resort C, then we can just do one of our double bangers. Um, this is not on the reference page and everything. This I sent this after, but it's essentially two double bangers. So either take them off the shelf, but I did send these to route so you can replace it with two of these. So total for the job is two double bangers and two custom quad bangers for power supplies. And so this is our this is our layout for LEDs. I do believe I sent, or I'm sending this over as a PDF as well. Um, so, all right, so I think that does it for the logos. Um, you got your cut list there. These guys here, um, like I say, just it's mostly just scratch your, scratch your chin a little bit, figure out what you wanna do as far as how many times you're gonna to have to flip these back and forth. I know it's a pain in the butt, but uh, that's it. Just make sure everything's welded really well. Um, you know, like I say, make sure these welds are nice because these are gonna to have to be nice and strong. And just like I say, make sure you got everything you need. If you have any questions, hit me up. I'm gonna break this apart. Um, I'm gonna do another um, video coming up for the side frames here. So that way we can uh, stop and review. So anyway, yeah, hit me up if you have any questions on this.